now for an update on um, the $170 speeding ticket that uh, David Lee, Constable David Lee, or DLAP15 is his QID number, um, just decided to try and pull over on me with uh, back on the 15th of April, I believe it was, Good Friday. Um, now, what he's done, it, it, they supplied me disclosure, which I find hysterical. Um, there's four photos in there. Not one of them has a date on it or any reference whatsoever. One of them's of my back of my car, and he's clearly taken these from inside his cruiser vehicle, and he's tried to take a snapshot of the locked speed on the uh, device. Um, as if to say, that's the speed, that's the car in front with no date, no reference whatsoever. Okay, so what I did, because I have a speed camera, is I went and did the same thing. Except I went and parked behind multiple cars with the same speed locked in, because I can lock that speed in and leave it there all day long if I want to, and then pull up behind multiple cars, or repeat the process for slightly different numbers, and then pull up behind whoever I like and take a photo and that's supposed to be evidence beyond a reasonable doubt is it every one of the four photos he supplied are of him in an ATK zone so I went and took a few photos myself of the same place so it's going to be interesting for him to try and explain that one isn't he now if we're in a 60k area like he's claiming what was he doing 61 why was why was he speeding hmm um, so, as far as the law is concerned, when you're slowing, when you're coming to a, a decreasing speed zone, you have 250 metres to slow down. Um, when it's an increased speed zone, you are not allowed to increase from the current speed zone into the higher speed zone until you pass the sign. There is no coming up to it excuse. Now, I noticed in his note, notes made at the time that he says, excuse given was entering an ATK area. No, if, if I was there at all, I believe I may have said, I cannot confirm or deny, I may have said, I'm in an ATK zone. Because I can show you, I can counter and easily insert reasonable doubt that I can do the same thing with my speed detector and pull up behind parked vehicles and do the same photographs. I can pull over on the side of the road and take a photograph of an 80k sign without a date on it and it means absolutely fucking nothing. I hope he's going to enjoy testifying on the stand because boy I've got some doozies for him, you know. But anyway, we'll, we'll leave it at that and we'll see how we get on but uh, I've got all of the initial disclosure he hasn't supplied me in um, certificate of accuracy for the odometer of his vehicle he was moving so he would need to do that um, the speed detector isn't enough because as I also prove in um, a video I'm going to add to here actually I show you how inaccurate your speedo can be compared to your actual um, to the radar detector, but exactly how accurate the radar detector is compared to say the GPS or your, your maps function on your phone, that little speed sign it gives you telling you your current speed is pretty much bang on within one kilometer. So um, yeah, anyway I'll let you guys look at that video, thought I'd give you some update. Um, so you guys can it. see what a speed detector looks like when it's running. I'd show you, show you how easy it is without a phone number, uh, without a, 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 a date or a time to show when it was taken to verify that time and that date that that machine was doing it like a speed camera would um, that it's very easy to lock in any speed and then pull up behind any other vehicle and say that that's what you clocked them at. Alright, so this is just to show you all. I have a little roof mount in the car, so that's where you're mounted at the moment, so you can see all of this. It all looks nice and clear, doesn't it? So we'll get rid of the pork settings. Get rid of the fast. And we'll speedo 
is actually giving me a reading a couple of k's higher than what this shows me, um, which adds up. When I'm doing 106 kilometers an hour on the speedometer here, from here, I'm actually doing 100 by this. If you really want to know how accurate um, your GPS is, stayed below the speed limit unlike our friend David Lee who was doing 61 in, a, in his purported 60k area otherwise he's going bloody slow in an 80k area and now I can lock that's locked in so let's pull up behind any vehicle and say they were doing 70 in a 50 area shall we because in fact turn left, then turn left. let's pull in behind this vehicle here turn right and say this vehicle here at the petrol station is doing 70k in a 50, shall we? Your destination is on the right. I know, I'm here, you idiots. But there you go. So we could say LAQ49 was doing 70 in a 60k area, which is where we are. Couldn't we? 
or I could pull up behind any vehicle and then take a photo of that locked speed even though that vehicle had nothing to do with it. Okay, so there you go, my car's off. As long as my machine's got power to it, it'll retain that uh, that locked speed. can going and just record myself behind all of these other cars and then still shot them and say I was behind all of them. And no, when going through a roundabout straight ahead you do not have to indicate. So as you can see that car there was doing 39 so it'll still tell you what the oncoming traffic is in case you strike a faster one you want to lock it in at. But if there's a car parked on the side of the road here, nothing stopping me from pulling up behind it, taking a photo just as our, uh, our friend David Lee did, and saying, oh no, no, that was, um, you know, that, that car was definitely doing 70 in a 50k area, because I'm in a 50k area here. So, it's going to make you wonder, doesn't it, people? Anyway. That's food for thought, I'll leave you with it, but that just shows you as a prime example how easy it is for someone to produce a photo like that and I can say it, I've been doing that speed or rough enough to that speed, lock them in for another one, doesn't all have to be the same numbers, just so long as it's, you know, their threshold over, um, and bada bing bada boom, see this guy's doing over 50, 67, 65. Now, it's, oh, one other thing, as far as the speed camera operator manual is concerned, you're supposed to visually view the car doing that speed for 100 metres before locking it in and confirming your visual notification of it with, along with the audio tone that you hear. So if you're tone deaf, how the hell can you operate it? And, um, and then after you've done that, you can then, um, you're, you're then supposed to lock it in on the radar, or take the photo with the radar. But it says quite clearly in the operator's manual, and I've got a few of their operator's manual, thanks to Official Information Act requests, um, that for their speed camera operating, especially for the dual DSR, like my stalker here, um, you must visually view the car doing that speed at 100 metres, through your visual eyes, as I just spotted that guy doing over 50. Um, then you've got to hear the audio tone at the same time within that 100 metres and then lock it in. There's no way in fuck David did that. It, it was an $80 ticket, I spent $160 challenging. So it's not about the money, it's about the principle. And myself thoroughly enjoying myself over 10 months making all of their lives a misery just as they do to us every day of their fucking existence.